guys, Pete here with GIS Solutions, and today we're going to go over heat map and kernel density in QGIS. The data source I'm using today are uh, solid waste landfills here in North Carolina. I'll leave a link down below in the show notes to this data set so you could follow along. So one way to show a heat map is to simply click onto the layer, right click, go to properties. At the top here where it says single symbol in the drop down, let's go down to heat map. The color ramp, let's change that from a gray scale to reds. The radius, this is going to be uh, around each point how we want it. So my projection down here is is in meters. So let's say we want uh, 20 kilometers. So if we go down to map scale, or I'm sorry, map units, and we change this to 20,000, 1,000 meters will be 20 kilometers. And click apply. Okay. Now we could kind of see it here, but the bottom end of the heat map is really kind of kind of bleeding out. So what we want to do is go and change that. So if we click onto the layer again, go to properties, and we right click on the color ramp here, edit color ramp. Now these are the points for each color ramp. So we could edit these colors, but we again, we just want to edit the, the low end. So what we want to do is click the low end here, and simply on the opacity, just say zero, just make it transparent. Click OK, apply, OK. And here's a, a nice little heat map of all the landfills here in North Carolina. Another way to do it is we could go to our geoprocessing tools, search for heat map, over here. So heat map kernel density estimation. So same thing, we're gonna be using the same point layer here radius well again we'll say 20,000 so it'll be uh, 20 kilometers now the row but this all just depends the, the raster uh, output size it is again all really depends on your data set I'll leave a link below that really goes over a lot of the the different types of kernel densities that you could use depending on the data type you have and the way you could change the kernel density is actually right here. So it's defaulted to quadratic. But again, depending on your data type, you could select a different type of kernel shape. So let's go to run that. Close. And again, it looks a little wonky, so let's go ahead and change that. So or the colors. So again, we're going to right click on to that new layer. Properties. From single band gray, let's change that to single band pseudo color. Okay. Now we have our reds. Again, with this low end, let's go ahead and change the color opacity to a zero so it's transparent. Click apply, click OK. And I'll toggle this on and off so it's pretty close to what we just did in the symbology. Now, this close out of this. Now this is a temporary layer. Uh, it's illustrated by this little icon. So what you need to do to save this out is simply right click, export, and save as. So anyway, hope that helps. If you have, guys have any questions or comments, please leave it down below. And as always, please like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.